Hey everyone, welcome back to The Rocketeer. Today I have a fun little project for us. This little 3D printed rocket it is a great park flyer. It is printed from PETG. So if you have a printer, it's easy to print with no supports. This is a great group project too. And I'll show you some pictures in a little bit on one of the groups that we uh, worked on this with. I'd also like to thank Jack Hydrazine for designing the fin cam, the nose cone, and uh, just ma and making some modifications to it to make it easy to print. It flies great on a B64, and it's just a lot of fun. Let's take a look. I have everything I need here to make the rocket. A BT-50 tube that is cut to 14 inches and various parts. I printed them in some different color combinations. If you're working with a group, it's always fun to let the kids pick different colors and kind of personalize their rocket a little bit. Uh, but today I'll be building the traditional red, white, and blue. Oh, there's one more thing we need, and that is some E6000. This is my glue of choice, and um, it works really good for this project. I'll leave an affiliate link in the description, and you can check that out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started building this rocket. We'll start out with a BT-50 body tube. You can buy these in groups of three. And uh, we are going to cut the body tube to 14 inches. I try to leave the uh, factory cut end for the nose cone. So I'll switch that around a little bit. Check your fin can and make sure that it fits. And it doesn't have to fit real tight, but uh, it needs to be able to slide through there without too much problem. If there's uh, a seam in there that has some flashing, you may need to take a hobby knife or something like that and clean it out. Or if there's any, I call them nerds, <laughs> those little plastic pieces, those little balls, make sure you knock all those out and that the uh, fin can is clean and ready to accept the uh, body tube. So what I'm going to do is take my E6000 on the cut end and just make some squiggly lines. It doesn't take a lot of glue. Like that. And then I twist on the fin can. I just kind of slowly twist it until I can see the end. Let me turn it around here so I can see it. I keep twisting until I can see the end of the body tube there. Now once that's complete, I'll take the motor mount. And basically it's the same idea. I'll just put some scribbles of glue on there. That. A little bit more here. And it's the same idea. I'm going to rotate that into the airframe. There. The thing I like about the E6000 is it gives you a little bit of time to reposition it if you need to. Now for the launch lug, there is a tapered end on one end. Uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult to see, but one end is tapered. And I put it uh, anywhere a little over 5 inches, between 5 and 6 inches somewhere on the airframe. It's not real critical where you put it, but um, somewhere, yeah, about right there. <laughs> So what I like to do, especially for a group activity, is to put the glue on the airframe myself and let the students glue on this part. The only thing you have to make sure is that uh, it doesn't line up with the, with the fin like that. Make sure it's somewhat in the middle here. So I'll go ahead and put a fairly good amount there. So we want it to squeeze out just a bit. I kind of do a little rotating like that with the glue. Make sure the strings don't get all over. Then I'll put this on there. And then I kind of squish it around a little bit like that. Spread that glue out. Make sure that it's nice and straight. Line it up and check it. This is one part that you want to come back and check once in a while to make sure it hasn't shifted or something like that. If you find that the fin can is a little tight or a little bit too loose, you can change the size of it, say 1% or so in your slicer, and just adjust that until the fin can or the nose cone, whatever part you need, fits the way you want it to. Tea bags work pretty well. I've had a couple of them tear out, so I've went to this 3D printed part, and uh, it just has a number of holes in it. You can see before I loop the Kevlar through it. 
and that attaches inside the airframe and makes for a very sturdy mount. Now I use 300 pound Kevlar to run through this part and uh, I know what you're thinking, wow that's, that's really way more than you need and, and it is, but the advantage is that the Kevlar, the thickness of it, gives uh, plenty uh, for the glue to attach to and it also works well for a parachute which we are going to design for this rocket and we'll get to that in just a few minutes. Yeah, it's, it's stronger than what you need but you can't go wrong with that. It's super durable and that's what I'm going to use. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put a generous amount of glue on the back of this. Really doesn't matter a lot which side but on the back of this I'm going to put a generous amount of glue. It's a little hard to demonstrate but I'm going to lower that into the airframe and then touch it to the side and that will be our attachment point. The only thing you have to watch is that you make sure that you get the attachment point lower than the lip that's on the nose cone. The nose cone fits into the airframe, needs a little room in there, so you want to make sure that it stays below that lip so that, uh, that there's clearance for everything. I have tied the Kevlar cord into this retainer piece that goes into the bottom of the nose cone. This was uh, Jack Hydrazine's design. It works really well. And one thing I want to do is I've put a, a double knot in the Kevlar and then I want to put a generous amount of E6000 into the cap here to help seal the Kevlar cord. And I pull that tight into there, kind of twirl it around a little bit, get it all up in there good. That looks good. And then I'll put some glue on the cap and then that will go into the nose cone. Fit these two together, give it a little twist like that and then you want to take a paper towel, clean off any excess glue and give this a tug, make sure that that sits in there. Oops, I guess I pulled it out a little bit too soon. Give it a a light tug. <laughs> uh, make sure you don't pull it out and let that set uh, overnight preferably and everything will be super secure and you can launch it the next day. The parachute is made from a plastic table cover and I'm using the same Kevlar string 300 pounds and each string is 22 inches long and that will span from one side to the other. Now I have a little trick that I found out if I mount opposing sides and then I mount this one across in this direction the parachute lines are never tangled so that was pretty cool when I found that out I'm going to use a hot glue gun to attach them now one thing you want to be careful of you don't want to touch the tip of course and you don't want the tip to touch this plastic tablecloth that you can get just a lot of it and make plenty of these uh, parachutes out of it for very little money but you don't want to touch the plastic tablecloth to the hot nozzle because it, it can uh, melt it. And if you get a small melt spot, you can just kind of, you know, uh, fill it in. So I just take a small amount. I'm going to try to do this a little awkward like this, but I think I can manage it. And I'm going to go ahead and spread out some glue, hot melt glue on each one. And this is kind of stringy too, I kind of do the back and forth thing. And then I let it sit for just a few seconds and cool a little bit. And this is kind of optional, but if you have uh, some water you can dip your finger in. If you can't uh, find some water nearby or you didn't get any, you can always just, you know, like we used to, wet our finger and just touch it like that. And it flattens it out. So I'll go ahead and do the other side. Same idea. Get some glue on there. Let it set for a second. Dip my finger in water or however you manage it and flatten it out. There. Now I'll continue to do the rest of them. I want to get to this side. I want to cross it over. I 
Bring it to the other side. Then check your parachute over and uh, if you need to touch up or add a little more glue, go, just go ahead and do that, flatten it all out, and you'll be good to go. Now depending on how old the students are, if you do this as a class activity, uh, if they're teenagers or so, they probably can handle a hot glue gun. If not, for younger students, then this is a, a step that you probably want to do by yourself. So what we end up with is a nine inch parachute. This is the no tangle. See the lines don't cross. That I traced from an existing parachute that I had. And then I copied it to a hardboard template to make it easy to reproduce. And then I just traced this out on the tablecloth. I used what's called a lark's head knot. You can look this up on YouTube to make a small knot here in the shot cord. And then what I'm going to do is pass the parachute through here and tie it on. I'm going to take our parachute and pass the cords through this lark's head knot. You can look this up on the internet and see how to tie it. Pass it through there, like so. And then I take the two ends, the looped end, and take the parachute and pass it through those loops, like so and then pull it together and you'll have a very secure knot that will hold the parachute to the shock cord. Simple to do, easy to reproduce, and that's it for our building process. Then of course you'll need to use some uh, parachute wadding, use a generous amount in the tube, pack it all in the tube, and I've flown it on a B64 and a C65. It probably will fly on an AA3 just as well. Uh, the next thing you want to do is personalize the rocket. So let's talk about that just briefly. One of the last things I do is write the motor mount size on, or the motor size, B64, so that the students can remember what size motor it takes. And the motor is friction fit, so I put a small piece of blue painter's tape on it, usually about one and a half wraps, and then it just friction fits into the motor mount like this. And it doesn't take a lot to hold it in, and uh, so don't, uh, don't overdo it. It doesn't have to be super tight, but it does have to fit in there snugly. And when the rocket is returned, you want to remove the motor so that uh, this spent motor doesn't go home with the student uh, because they smell and the parents probably are not going to like that. And also you can uh, use all kinds of markers and colored markers and things like that for them to decorate the rockets and put stars on it or other stickers as no those are always popular or uh, just uh, you know make your own design do your own paint work on it so uh, I hope you have enjoyed this following this there's going to be some pictures of students that have done this and you can see how fun it is now that you know how to do it share it with others enjoy it let's take a look Don't try to catch it, guys. Don't try. Four, three, two, 